Welcome back, folks. We got markets in positive territory right now. We got some action and a great day to have our man Teddy Kegstad on from the Tiger Forex Report. We got some action in the dollar yen. And, folks, we talk to Teddy usually every Wednesday. It's a treat. We got him on Friday at 40 past the hour. He puts out the Tiger Forex Report every Monday with a weekly issue, updates throughout the week when warranted. You can check it out under the newsletter tab on the front page of TFNN. You head on over there, you click on the Tiger Forex Report, you can sign up. It's $97 a month, folks. That comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers. And boy, let's get into it. We got some action this morning. Teddy Kegstack, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Boy, uh, I woke up. I saw the news on Bank of Japan. I said, I love it, man. We got Teddy on today to talk about this. We've been talking about the Bank of Japan. So I really haven't talked about it too in-depth yet, Teddy. But maybe if you could give us a quick summation um, as I pull this headline up, what the Bank of Japan did today and how that's impacting the markets and a pretty uh, dramatic shift, it seems, from the headlines I'm reading. Well, the first the first thing is that the Bank of Japan doesn't act very often. So, <laughs> so the fact that there's news of any kind, that's where you get a shake up to begin with, you know. So okay. I think it's a nice, it's a definitely nice tone, you know, showing that the direction that they've already started, you know, a while back ago is that, you know, remember that uh, prior to this new dynasty, if you will, that's forming for the Bank of Japan, you know, they hadn't done anything or really released any news for really a very, very long time. It was basically, they were just, they just existed, you know, and since the spring, since we've had this new turnover in leadership, you know, we've had actual action, we've act had an actual voice, you know, and a tone that, you know, is actually something where they're doing something, you know, so I think that's the biggest carry their biggest takeaway you need to look at from the bank of japan is that they're actively doing things now now is it aggressive no not by any means you know the fact that they're actually doing things that means something in itself okay so and i i, I think that's the kind of perspective you have to take like I, I would equate to what's going on with the Bank of Japan right now with the tortoise and the hare. Okay, now we all know that the story, the hare, the tortoise wins the race. Well, the BOJ is definitely the tortoise, and like our Fed, if if you would, will be the whether it be the hare. You know, so I think that when it comes to the currency valuations and things like that, I wouldn't get to put too much weight fundamentally on what they're doing because of the fact that it's on such a lag, if you will. Nice. And I was reading your Tiger Forex report, and I know you always cover the dollar yen among with many other pairings, of course. And in there last week, I think, or this Monday, I should say, um, you were talking about, you know, this area that we had in there back on. And I got a daily chart of the dollar yen, Teddy, and I'm just looking at that recent low, right, July 14th, somewhere above 137. Mm -hmm. um, and you were saying, you know, beside breaking that, right, I wouldn't look for a change of trend. And you talked about how it would have to be pretty dramatic shift in terms of the hawkishness that that would take. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you maybe saw here? or Because we got quite a pop. We almost made it to 138, man, this morning. And we're just like that, we're back to 140.51. Um, so is mm -hmm. this not really a change of trend that you're looking at right now on this type of action? Or you're, we're waiting to, Correct. for it to play? Correct. Now, okay. if, if the BOJ would become very aggressive you know, in their hawkish stance, then I would say that that downside breakout area where that swing low was from a couple of weeks ago would be in jeopardy. Then I could see nice. us getting back down to the 135, 132 area even, you know, which would be a big sell off for the U.S. dollar yen. But right now, the Fed isn't really laying off the gas pedal. You know what I mean? Like they, they've they've decreased what they're doing, but there's still there's there's every reason to think that the Fed could jump on interest rates still going forward through the rest of this year if numbers started to fall apart. We have a big unemployment number coming out next week. Like people didn't realize that besides the central bank action over the past few days between the, our Fed and the Bank of Japan, you know, y y these rate decisions are one thing, but we had an unemployment claims number that came out yesterday that's not going in the right direction for what the Fed wants, you know? So, and, and I think that if the unemployment number comes out very strong, meaning lower unemployment, you know, that's going to be a, every reason in the world to think that the Fed is going to remain hawkish and they're going to be at a much aggressive, more aggressive level than the, than the BOJ is. And that's why I give you this analogy of the tortoise and the hare. So it, it's, it's very good to have this transparency and see what kind of direction that the yen is going in. And I think that what it does do is take out that, that valuation of seeing the yen, U.S. dollar yen really rally to an extreme. You know what I mean? If the BOJ didn't do anything over the past, you know, 
day or so or even the last or even coming up in the next couple of weeks, it would really be hard to see the U.S. dollar, dollar yen not try and push back towards those highs that we made a couple uh, months ago. We still have a good chance of getting to those highs, but we're probably going to establish a range. I don't think we're going to spike through them, and if we do, you're going to see a very bit quick head fake, if that makes any sense. You know what I'm sure. saying? Like, yeah. So the, that, that fundamental factor, the differential between our interest rate moves and our hawkishness versus their hawkishness, we're still the stronger ones there. But the fact that they are playing now means that w- it is a big deal. It means we're, we're not going to be able to accelerate in strength you know, in that trend because because remember, when the dollar was weak versus many other currencies, it was still strong versus the yen and has been over the past couple of years, let alone the past few months. You know, And I think that's something that you have to really take a look at is that now we may not be as strong against the yen as we have been. You know what I'm saying? The trend is still bullish. I'd be very cautious trying to be a big seller on this one. You know, the only thing I would say is if the Fed all of a sudden said, "Yeah, we're not going to raise rates for the next like four or five months," you know, or even just the next couple of meetings, whatever, then you might see us hit those lows pretty hard. But otherwise, I think we might be actually establishing a wide range trade. Yeah, pretty interesting, man. Uh, the volatility, and we're back above 140. And boy, yeah, when I do take that chart back to even you know beginning of 2021, I got almost 100 on my chart. Um, so still sitting at about 140. Pretty remarkable. Uh, where do you want to jump to next? Can we talk some some euro maybe? I mean, pretty interesting week, right? We get the Fed, sure. we get the ECB um, to follow. We got the euro at about 110 right now. A little bit of downward action um, yesterday. What did you think of the action of the euro yesterday? Well, you know, all the I have to say, all the currencies had some phenomenal volatility the last couple of days. And a lot of it has, you know, I heard you talking about the 10-year earlier this morning. And the, the interest rates have a lot to do with that. You've had a lot of movement in, you know, the long and short-term interest rates, which definitely will cause the currencies to move like that. You know, yeah. so as that volatility increases to that, when they start to hit those extremes, like you mentioned, a two-point move in the 10-year, that's an extreme move, you know, sure. especially not off of anything that would really cause that shake up you know what i'm saying yeah. and it's all right. Right, right i mean and you're also yeah. pushing those higher yields you know yeah. and that that's where you you get this this you know fundamental tr- aspect of the trade starts to come in you know like we've been trading very technically for the past couple of weeks and the fundamentals you know i, I remember a year ago saying how like the, the economic numbers are very very big you know and, and and you have to watch like when they like the euro especially when the german numbers come out and the eu numbers they haven't been very good you know, and and they're not track they're not tracking in a in a good direction. And the thing is, they don't have the bullets like we do. And I, I think that we're going to start to really see that inflection. So when it comes to like the euro, you know, um, it's 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 stuck. It's I, I can't see it getting very strong versus the dollar, no matter what they do. You know, no matter how hawkish sure. they get. You know, it's because of the yeah. fundamentals. You know, so yeah. it's tough to compete with the numbers that we're putting out, man. Whether it's the GDP numbers, some of the earnings right. numbers, pretty strong earnings season, man. These companies, they keep crushing it, um, right. to say the least. Teddy, I appreciate you coming on, man, on quite a day. We look forward to talking to you next Wednesday. Have a great weekend, and uh, folks, Sounds check good. out the Tiger Forex Report. Teddy, I appreciate it, man. We'll talk to you next Wednesday. Okay. Take care. Have a nice weekend, Tommy. Have a great weekend. Folks, check out Tiger Forex Report. You heard it. Currency, man. They're moving. we got one more segment. We'll be right back to finish up the show.